everybody, this is Kristen with Hex Books and Wanderlust and welcome back to my channel. Today I am here to show you a seaming technique called the mattress stitch. The mattress stitch is a great way to seam fabric together so that it's almost completely invisible to tell that there is even a seam there. It's really that amazing. There's lots of ways that you can so like seam together your different pieces, um, whether you're working a cowl flat and then need to seam up one side, or maybe you're working a sweater and have to um, sew your sleeves on or shoulders together or something like that. Sometimes seams are just unavoidable, but they don't have to be noticeable. So today I'm going to show you how to make the mattress stitch, how to, how to sew the mattress stitch, because while this is a crochet tutorial, it is not a crochet stitch. Um, the, one, the first thing that you need to know about working this uh, method or technique is that it needs to be worked with the wrong sides of your fabric together. So in this instance, I've got a couple of swatches that I'm going to sew together for you guys. The sides facing up here are my right sides or the good side. So sometimes you might have textured fabric that it's textured on one side, but not the other. You would want to make sure that that textured side is the side that you have face up. Um, we have a, there's a common expression in sewing where you have wrong sides together and that's what we're going to do. So I've got my wrong sides and I'm going to put them together so that this is a right side and this is a right side. And to get started, I am actually, normally I would obviously do this with a color yarn that matches my project. But in this instance for the tutorial, I wanted to show you guys how to do this with a contrasting color yarn. So that way you can really see the difference and just how well it gets hidden. It's really amazing. You guys are going to freak. It's awesome. It's like magic. I'm telling you. All right. So normally when I do this too, um, you know, I'm not cutting a separate piece of yarn. I've usually tied off my, uh, my work somewhere and I've left a really long tail to sew things together. So that's something that you would want to make sure that you have done as well. Um, so yeah, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got my stitches lined up here, but I, because I didn't have a tail, uh, a yarn tail that I'm sewing with, I'm going to attach mine first. So I'm just going to go underneath the top V's of both of the first stitches and kind of pull that through. Maybe. Probably pulled too much. There we go. So I'm just going to kind of leave that hanging there and I'm not too worried about it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my first stitch. So right now my yarn, my needle has come out of my, let's call this piece A or piece number one and piece number two. So I'm going to come back to my first piece and I'm going to go down into the middle of that first stitch. So you've got the top V of your stitch here and I'm going to go right down in the middle and I'm going to go kind of around the back of the stitches here and back out through the top of the second stitch, all of the same first piece of fabric. And I'm just gonna pull my yarn through. I'm not gonna pull it crazy tight because I wanna be able to get into this, these stitches over here. So the next step is I'm gonna go back over to my second piece and I'm gonna do the same thing. Now this is a little tight because of my join earlier. So I'm just gonna kind of dig around till I find the middle of that stitch. And this time I'm going to go down through and back up. So I'm keeping, the thing to keep in mind with this is that I am keeping my needle on the inside or the wrong side of the stitches. I'm not coming around on the good side of my fabric. So I shouldn't be able to see my needle from the right side of my fabric. So as you can see, I've got the wrong side right here that you can see kind of peeking through our seam here, but our right side of our fabric, you can't see my needle through the front of the fabric at all. So that's what we want. So we're gonna come up. I've got my tails all tangled here. All right, so now I've got my first mattress stitch started. So now I'm gonna come back to my first piece I'm going to go back to my second stitch, the same stitch that I came out of previously. And again, I'm going to go down behind. This is so you've got your front loop and your back loop. So I'm going to go between my loops 
around the back side of my fabric and up between the loops on the third stitch and then pull through without tangling tails. Okay, so now I've got that one done. And now I'm gonna go back to my second piece. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to insert my hook between the front, the front and back loops and work back on the back side of my fabric, back up out of this third stitch on that second piece. So now you can see, here's where my join was and here's the little zigzag I'm creating with my seam, right? I'm gonna do it again and I'm gonna show you some of the magic here. You guys ready? All right, so we're gonna go back down into our third stitch from our first piece around the back of those stitches and out the top of the fourth stitch. Then we're gonna go back to our second piece and do the same thing, in, go down into the third stitch and come back out the top of the fourth, making sure that your needle is on the inside of those stitches, inside of your seam rather. Okay. So now this is something that I am going to do periodically as I'm doing my seam. I don't like to leave this step for the very end because I feel like it can really pull your fabric too much. So I'm going to have my yarn end in one hand and then my yarn tail in the other. And I'm just going to hold tight on them and kind of pull them together. And what you're going to notice now is that you can't see my contrasting yarn at all. Okay, so let's keep going. I'm going to just keep showing you guys because I know sometimes it can get a little confusing. So let's just keep going and I'm going to keep showing you here. So after I tightened it, it is a little tight. Um, I'm going to have to wedge my needle back in through that last stitch. So just always remember that you're coming, you're going to start on the same stitch that you came out of previously. So just keep moving in that same movement. Go back to the other side. Go in through the stitch I came out of previously. And out the next one. And we'll just keep going. And I'll do this probably four or five stitches. And then I'll Give it a gentle tug to close the seam again. I think when I first learned how to do this stitch, the trickiest thing for me was remembering which direction I needed to push my needle. Like, am I going on? Like, you can kind of see... I don't know how to best try and show this. So you've got the actual post of your stitch that you can kind of see here at the angle. So you see the post right here in the middle between the stitches and you want to go around the inside or the wrong side of your fabric in this instance so that you can see. So we know that we've got wrong sides together, right? So this is the inside of our seam. This is the wrong side of our fabric. You can see the needle here, that's fine. What we don't want to see is the needle on this side, which you can't, except for where it's coming out on the top, which doesn't count. But the post here is covering where my needle is. So just try and remember that when you work those stitches. Okay, and so now I'm going to give it another gentle tightening. So I'm going to hold on to the end of my seam here, or my join, and just really slowly and carefully pull that seam shut.
always trying to be careful about grabbing those loops in the right spot. Okay, and again, I'm gonna do it a little tightly. All right. Now see, I pulled that so tight, I can barely see my last stitch. So just be careful when you do that too, that you make sure you actually grab that last stitch. Snagging myself on my swatch. Coming up on the end here, and then I'm going to show you guys how I finish this off. And then we'll see what the difference looks like on the front and the back. Okay, so I'm just going to come back through this last one here. Pull that through nice and tight. And now I'm just going to kind of come back through the bottom here. Make sure that we attach those nice and tightly so that everything is nice and lined up. Okay, so that is the mattress stitch join. So now look at this. You can barely even tell that it's there. It's really unnoticeable. I mean, yeah, it's a seam. It is there, but come on. You can barely notice it, right? Let's look at the back. This is why we do this on the right sides out or wrong sides together because then when you turn it over and you look at the seam on the other side, it's still barely noticeable. You can still barely see the contrast color yarn, but it is there. The difference is um, that the seam is got like this bumpy ridge to it, whereas the front is very flat. So it's joined those stitches and kind of like they're just kissing each other there. And on the back is where we've gotten all those inside loops of our seam that have been joined together. So we get this kind of bumpy ridge. So that is how you work the mattress stitch. I hope that you are able to practice this. It does take some practice and it does take some getting used to. Definitely take your time and keep practicing it though, because I think that once you get the hang of it, it's gonna be your go-to seaming choice. It definitely is mine. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, be sure to give it a thumbs up and like that video for me if you did. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And um, I will be putting a photo tutorial for this up on my blog as well. Sometimes it's nice to kind of slow down and I can show angles and such better on photos sometimes than it's easier to on videos. They have their, they both have their pros and cons. So that will be available for you guys as well. Um, yeah, that's all I've got for you guys today. Make sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel and I will catch you guys back here the next time. Bye.